Hi, this is David with entry number 200 and 268. Coming at you here in Gangneung on Wednesday evening. Um, you always see me look this way because I have my calendar. And I'm just checking, double checking. It is almost 6 o'clock here in the city and I am very tired. Um, I don't know why in particular. Uh, just lethargic. Um, anyway, it's been a good day overall. Um, I was told today that um, some of the students are having some issues with my class, even though that I, I personally felt like everything was going pretty well. Um, some of the kids are having some problems with, I guess they're feeling it's a bit repetitive. Um, but, so last semester it was repetitive because the mentor teacher was terrible and just kept changing everything so I had to like reteach stuff. This time, I honestly did not really repeat anything. It was a lot of new material and what I'm thinking is happening is that I have two boys and one girl who are slightly more advanced than everyone else so a lot of times they feel like they can just be little dicks and horses ass and you know ignore the lesson so I'm pretty sure they're just not hearing anything I'm saying and they're just saying oh this motherfucker just knows is just teaching us what I already know and so they don't have to pay attention where if they were, were paying attention obviously they would realize that that's not the case, that, um, that, that actually new material is being taught. And today we went over ultimatums, which are kind of, well, you know what they are. And so um, I made sure that everyone was paying really close attention. And it looked like about 70% of the class understood exactly what I was saying, or maybe 60%. And then another 40 were just kind of like going along with it which I feel like a 60-40 split in this kind of situation I'm teaching in is not bad. It's not good, but it's not bad. Probably like okay to good. So I'm fine with that, and if I can get retention up to about maybe 30% of the class, I think that's a win. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with retention. Uh, a lot of people don't even check for retention. They just kind of move on, and that's it. But I'm really a stickler for trying to actually teach the kids and not just make sure they have a really fun time every day. Um, so uh, I'm going to be switching methodologies a little bit for 5-6, but I think 3-4 are still okay with pretty much how I'm doing things. Um, but 5-6 are definitely in for a slight reckoning. I'm not mad at them, I'm just more frustrated with myself, I guess, because I felt like I was really doing things differently, and things apparently were not different for them. So uh, that's that. I think uh, the other thing with the kids is that I've tried to explain it before but I haven't been able to really say it convincingly to anyone that I'm not dealing with, you know, smart kids. I'm dealing with one or two smart kids and the rest are kind of like mm, just normal, average. So in, in school an average is 70%. It's like a C. And we are all told that we need, that we are, not we need, or we might be, but we are A's, 90, 90 and above percents. And even a normal 90% would be like a disgrace, I think, to many people, for many parents to think their kid is just a 90%. Why isn't he 100%? And you kind of have to realize that there's 7 billion people on Earth, okay? Of that 70, or 7 million, or seven billion. You you can't have everyone be extraordinary. You can have five percent, if that, probably more like three percent, or maybe two percent of the population be extraordinary. And everyone else just falls in line with being amazing to being retarded. And that's just how it is. That's you can't really fight that. That's statistics, that's math, that's odds, that's life, that's evolution it's necessary for society to have people who are not as smart as others. 
the elite few are the ones who are scientists, the engineers, and the ones who are able to really change things through their intellect. Everyone else follows them, or at least should follow them. You have skilled people, which is another topic, but skills are something that can defy intellect, can defy social norms. If you're good, really good at one thing, or maybe two things, you can defy everything. But those people are very even fewer. Okay, look at the makeup of every single human being that's in the NBA, and then use that as your as your um, as your ratio for the 30 million people or 350 million people who live in the U.S. or 400 million now. You know that's a very small percentage of people who are are elite enough to make it through to the NBA. And that's just basketball. Okay. So, not everyone is great. And so, I completely understand that. And although I'm completely open to seeing greatness in students, what I have seen many times is if they're given the choice to be great or to be stupid, they choose stupidity. I think a few people may argue that's the fault of the teacher or the person in charge, but, um, you know, if someone's truly great, they'll shine no matter what, no matter what situation they're put in. Greatness will come through. Um, maybe if you're, you know, an infant and you're put in a prison camp, you know, that's one thing, but these aren't infants and this isn't prison camp. This is school and they're all, you know, 10 to 13 years old, and so if they're going to be little, little shitheads, then that's just the price they'll pay is, you know, not learning English, and frankly not going very far in their lives here, because English is a very big deal for young Koreans to learn. So that's about it. Uh, this was a bit longer, I feel, so uh, I think I'll end there. I'm just, you know, in conclusion, I just would like to say that I know that there is the potential for greatness in everyone, but not everyone needs to be great. You know, not everyone needs to be very successful. In order for society to run, there needs to be people who clean toilets, who dig ditches, who move dirt from one pile to another. These are necessities. If I was really good at moving dirt from one pile to the other, I'd probably be doing that now instead of what I'm doing here. So, that's just how things are, that's just life. You can't really fight it. You can do really, if you try really hard, you can accomplish anything. But there's a difference between trying really hard and achieving something and being born with that innate drive, okay? I'm not sure if that's really the right way to convey it, but there is a difference between working really hard and achieving something and having that, or having that genius that's already built inside of you. Um, it, some people call it an IQ, but there is something to be said about hard work versus innate ability. So they both lead to the same goal destination but you how you get there you know that's where life comes into play so thanks for watching this has been entry 267 or 268 and i will talk with you tomorrow bye